views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. Get ready to rid yourself of all that is weighing you down and holding you back from living the life you want for yourself. Coming Clean, The Art of Transparency with Katherine Moss is a show for women in recovery who are ready to live life on purpose. Tune in and let Katherine help you live your truth one day at a time. Now here's your host, Katherine Moss. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Coming Clean Radio, The Art of Transparency. I'm your host, Katherine R.T. Moss. So um, once again, each week, on Coming Clean, I invite a guest on the show to share their unique truth and their authentic message in Coming Clean and Living on Purpose. So my hope is that this show and its message of transparency can inspire you to become honest with yourself and allow you to start living your truth, whatever that is for you. If you like the show, um, I'd ask you please to like the Coming Clean Radio Facebook page and sign up for my monthly newsletter at katherinemoss.com. And I send out that monthly newsletter um, for upcoming guests and sometimes some yoga and meditation videos as well. So in addition, I would really appreciate it if you would also take the time to leave a review for me on iTunes. Coming Clean is now on iTunes. The show is brand new. And it's so I think it's easy for podcasts to get lost in the crowd. And apparently quick reviews help that. Um, so it would really help me promoting it and allows other people to discover the show as well. So if you are if you Google my name, Catherine R.T. Moss, you sh- the show will pop up and you can leave a review. So um, before beginning, I would like to share a poem with you that's... Um, really been inspiring and I feel like it will kind of go with the message of today's show. So it's a poem written by a woman named Colette Nolan, aka Cunt Lady Love. That's right. Her name is Cunt Lady Love. And this poem is entitled Jump. Don't pretend to me that you don't understand that you don't know or care or give a damn. Because behind those grins and dramatic gestures, I can see your bones and your soul. I know what's in there because I used to be just like you. I used to hide my pain and passion under a mask of lies and gossip. That's right, I used to be just like you. I used to wear a face that easily erased the girl inside who was tangled in paranoia and sadness, unsure what to make of all the badness and madness, unsure unsure of how to even begin to see, how to get to know me. I, like you, jumped from one gaudy carousel to another, never letting my feet touch the ground, for fear of sinking. But when I finally realized that no one was listening, that no one really cared, and that my contempt for myself was pulling the clown's mask off my grubby, guilty face, I jumped to the ground and fell down a tunnel that led directly to my heart. I was hugged by the trees and lay on a bed of moss and soft leaves. I learned that although I had little control of the badness, the madness, and ultimately the sadness, I could make life easier by allowing myself to be me. So that I, I love this poem because I think it's, you know, she talked, Colette talks about going through these kind of going down into the depths of yourself through, through negative feelings and depression and the badness and the madness that she talks about and realizing that it's okay to start to like yourself and to really allow yourself to be yourself and to be seen. Um, I think that that's exactly what I'm trying to do here on the show. So if you like that poem, 
you might like her website. She's a very inspiring and passionate woman. Her name is Colette Nolan and again, goes by the name of Cunt Lady Love. <laughs> and her website is cherishthecunt.com. I know that's quite um, a racy title, but you know she's a very passionate woman. So today, um, obviously the show is a little different. I normally have guests on the show. However, today I am flying solo. And I thought it would be very interesting for me to share my story of recovery and how I came to the path of yoga. Um, I've been practicing yoga for a while, for um, several years, and started to teach just recently. Um, so a little bit about me. Um, I'm not, I am a teacher, however, I'm not a guru or claim to know any everything there is to about, about yoga. I enjoy it, and it's been something that's very been very impactful on my life. So I'm here to share my own experiences and also the path of yoga. Um, I am originally from the United States. Um, I live in Switzerland now, I'm married to a Swiss. And so what, I, what, what I'm going to do now is kind of give you a brief understanding of yoga and how I understand it. I think it's different for everyone without getting too philosophical and then share my personal story with you. So first and foremost, I think that when we think of, you know, what is yoga really? Um, I think a lot of people see it in different ways. It is such an inner practice. Um, some people define it as union, um, or to yoke in the English language. Um, yoga is not a religion or a sect. It's open to all. And it can be described as almost a science, a science of self-realization, you know, meaning using yogic techniques to realize the truth of who you are. Um, just discover your highest self. And that's what I, you know, on coming clean, that's what's through the practice of yoga and going through recovery, I've realized that if I'm not being my true real self, then I will continue to suffer. So allowing that real self to be seen is, is real freedom for me. So yoga, um, in my opinion, or in my view is a practice of becoming very aware of ourselves. Um, you know, the breath, um, the way we hold and feel inside our bodies, connecting with our physical bodies, especially after, um, years maybe of self-destructive behavior, befriending ourselves and, really reconnecting and feeling safe in our bodies. So with yoga, we achieve physical, emotional, and spiritual balance. And again, that links so well into programs of recovery that deal with the physical, mental, and spiritual. And so in return, we come to understand that the, you know, that this idea of ourselves, this little self that we always thought we were is expanded. Um, and that's what, you know, a lot of people talk about higher consciousness and they, you know, that's what you can relate that to. Um, so, you know, it's a, it's a practice. It's something that, you know, you have to work on just, just like your recovery. Um, so yeah, most likely when we think of yoga, we think of, um, the asanas, the physical postures. However, I believe that that's just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to to yogic practice. That's just one slice of the cake, if you will. But that's the, the part that we normally like to focus on. So there are many um, um, parts of, of the yogic practice. And again, I don't want to get too physic um, philosophical. How, However, um, we can go through these, the teachings of yoga very quickly. So there are eight limbs or practices of yoga to, to achieve, you know, the main goal, um, the union with yourself. And this can be all found in the yoga sutras of Patanjali, if anyone's interested in understanding the, the, phil the philosophy of yoga. So the first one is yamas, which is right living, ahimsa, nonviolence. Satya, for example, truthfulness. So ahimsa became very popular, especially with the work that Gandhi did. Niyamas 
observance, purification, contentment, and self-study. And so yamas and niyamas can be attributed to like the right ways of living, right living. And then we have asana, which are the postures, which we all are very familiar with. And in a lot of classes, we, we work on the asana, um, the postures to prepare the physical body. Fourth, pranayama, which is a life force control. So we're, we're achieving um, control over the, our energies in our body. Fifth is pratyahara, a sense withdrawal. And the key to practicing the pratyahara is observing the body, breath, and sensation as a detached witness. So just almost imagining if you're observing someone else, someone else's body. And six is dharana, which is concentration. So this is the practice before you actually start meditating. Some people use beads. Some people use a mantra to really allow themselves to go into that meditation deeper. So this is almost like the preparation that we do right before meditation. It's a science. And then dhyana moves from the techniques of a science to an art. So this is no no action. This is an, an art of being. And some would say this is true meditation. The last step would be samadhi, which is union. And this is the, the goal of practicing yoga, a union with yourself, a state of true joy and bliss. So um, you're listening to Coming Clean Radio. I just went through the, the phil- philosophy of yoga um, as I understand it. So we're going to take a quick break and we come back. I'm going to continue talking about the path of yoga and how it's also played an important role in my own recovery and discovery. So we're going to take a break. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Do you want to achieve your goals? Do you want to strengthen relationships with others? Do you want to improve your financial status? Colette Marie Steffen is partnering with Mark Kettenbach to bring you an energetic upgrade online experience launching in April. Unfold and develop your full potential. Visit energeticupgrade.com today for more information. That's energeticupgrade.com. Hey everyone, this is Dr. Pat. I wanted to tell you about a new, powerful, and compelling play by Nicholas Basile. Coming to Seattle July 7th at Cornish Playhouse, Seattle Center, the United States of China. On one hand, a dedicated American patriot who would give her life for her country. On the other hand, someone who has been battling the injustice and corruption of America most of her life. And she is as confused as any American could be about what she truly believes in. My play, The United States of China, is about the trial of Miriam Hopkins, who is a metaphor for all that America stands for. This is more than a play experience. It's a movement. It's a movement to create a new level of awareness. Knowledge is power, and we are powerful. Get your tickets today at americathestrong.com. Get ready to rid yourself of all that is weighing you down and holding you back from living the life you want for yourself. Coming Clean, The Art of Transparency with Katherine Moss is a hit show for women in recovery who are ready to live life on purpose. Tune in and let Katherine help you live your truth one day at a time. Live each Tuesday, 9 a.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Shine On Radio, Find Your Shine with Kelly is the show that celebrates what makes you, you. Join co-hosts Kelly Wadler and Dr. Pat Basile as they break down how to brilliantly fuel and move your body and love what makes you shine. Kelly is a professional arts and wellness coach dedicated to helping brilliant women find their confidence, energy, self-love, and shine. Tune in to Shine On Radio with Kelly and find your shine on TransformationTalkRadio.com. 
Song of the Heart, Walking the Path of Light, from author and healer Francine Vale is available now. Through Francine's life story, we learn how imperative it is to love one another. Once this simple truth is learned, peace on earth will prevail. Song of the Heart is a life lived and a story told for this purpose. To learn more about Francine and her amazing gifts, or to order your copy of the book today, visit angelsandlightbeings.com. We're back on Coming Clean Radio with myself, Catherine Aratimas. Today, I am without guest. I am flying solo and talking to you about my personal path of discovery and recovery and how I came to the path of yoga and meditation, which has really been very, very, um, very important in my, in my, um, in my journey. So... What are, I mean, many, many paths and even faiths tell us, I mean, yoga obviously is not a religion, as I said before, um, but many paths and faiths tell us to, you know, to, to find truth, you look within and yoga is no exception. You know, it's a very intimate practice to go within yourself. And that's why I think that it's so, it's becoming so much so popular. And I think that's also why it's very popular with the recovery community. Um, so through a personal and exploratory practice, it teaches us to, you know, look within ourselves for what it is that we seek. Um, so if, when we're in the throes of self-destructive behavior, no matter what it is, if we suffer from sickness of the mind or soul, why would our solution be external? You know, why, if, if we are suffering from maybe disease of the mind or, you know, depression or any, any sort of addiction, why would we think that seeking solutions outside of us would be the answer? And that's what a lot of us do. And that's definitely what I did. Um, we search for solutions in relationships and that can take the form of codependency, which I know also quite well. Food. Um, I think that food is also something that gets mixed in, especially with women. A lot of women that I've talked to, we have the food and we have the, the alcohol addictions and um, substances, uh, travel, distractions, et cetera, you know, doing the, the geographical, just trying to, trying to um, change, you know, getting up and moving or, you know, taking another job. A lot of times when things go wrong or if they're not going the way that I want to, immediately I think, okay, well, let's move. Yeah, but that's, that's always what I've done when I was younger, but now I'm like, okay, don't move. <laughs> Just, you know, everything's going to be okay. It'll, it'll pass. This too shall pass. Right. So is our happiness dependent on situations and other people? You know, this is something that we have to ask ourselves is, is the contentment that we feel within ourselves dependent on, um, things that we're consuming or relationships that we have or jobs that we hold, or is it coming from something within us? and being our true selves. So a little bit more about me going backward. I, I am from the Midwest. I think I've said that before on the show. I'm born and raised in Chicago, Illinois. And my mother was from the inner city of Chicago and father was from rural Wisconsin. So I think I was raised as someone with a lot of like Midwestern values Um, you know, generally, but I can't make a blanket statement. However, you know, generally conservative, friendly folk who, you know, see the real value in life, um, not driven by materialism. So family and faith are often very important in the Midwestern culture. And I always had 
an interest in in Europe and traveling. So right when I um, graduated college, I decided to leave. And I left the United States and I moved to France. And because I think that I also just wanted to get away. Um, didn't really know who I was. I didn't really know what I wanted, but I know that I just wanted to just get out of there. Um, I think everyone can kind of feel that way sometimes leaving, you know, the place that you were born into to seek something more exciting sometimes. And, you know, I had early addictive behavior. I, um, the first time that I ever had alcohol, it was, um, not a good situation. There was a blackout involved and that never really occurred to me. Um, but I had that experience and that kind of, now it was a a little bit of a red flag, but at the time I didn't think much of it. I also had, um, I noticed that when I was younger, I really felt comforted by food as well. I just felt that my emotions were taken care of. Um, I felt safe with, um, consuming food. And so from age 19 to about 30 years old was also, it was a a very uh, dark time in my life because I started to, I was on my own. Um, I had lived on my own in Chicago. Um, and then I moved, I was back and forth between the United States and Europe for a, a long time. So from between the age of 19 and 30, when 30 when it was when I got sober, it was a dark time because I was really struggling with alcohol and depression. Um, and then sometimes from the outside, everything seemed more or less okay. And maybe from um, people that knew me, they're like, you know, they, maybe they didn't see anything wrong. Maybe they did. So I looked okay. Um, maybe sometimes I didn't. But inside, I was really, I was barely surviving, to be honest. And, you know, as humans, we need to grow and develop. And during these years, um, there was no growth, to be honest. Um, There was only stagnation. And like I said before, I used food and alcohol to numb my feelings because I had no way to cope with the everyday. I I did feel depressed. I did suffer from eating disorders. Um, But my my those feelings that I had. Um, of feelings of insecurity and worthlessness and just a fear of impending doom. It didn't feel connected to, to what I was doing, like alcohol. It just didn't, maybe it sounds obvious, but I think a lot of people, they don't see the connection. You know, they, it's just something that I did. And I didn't, if you ask my, if you'd asked me back then, you know, how was your life? And, you know, it's almost like, asking a fish, how's the water? Well, this is just the way things are. This is what I do. And this is what people that I know do. You know, we all drink. Um, so yeah, my behavior wasn't social and I was basically, I, I felt out of control and drank to, to go within myself, you know, to pull down the shade and just go to another place. And I didn't want to be present in my own life. So like I said, this wasn't really a conscious choice I was making. However, this was the way that I chose to live. Um, When you think about, I mean, I say this was a a choice that I made, but I think that I felt powerless over the way my life was going. And I think a lot of people feel powerless because they don't feel like they're making any choices. And I don't feel like things were ever, I was ever choosing, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to date this person. I'm going to go here. I was just basically taking what was being offered to me or liking anyone that liked me or dating, you know, like you want to date me. Okay, that's fine. I was never making choices. And when you don't make choices, you don't feel powerful and you don't have the confidence. So power of choice, just so people know they have choices is a really, really important thing. So, um, like I said, I grew up in the Midwest and during this time, I, you know, I, I attended church when I was younger and during this time of from 19 to 30, I didn't, I no longer went to church. You know, a lot of people, when they move away, they don't have to go anymore. So they don't go. And Christianity to me was, was bound up with right-wing conservative politics. And I didn't want to be 
<laughs> I didn't want to have anything to do with that. And an idea of this idea of God that I had learned was, you know, it's a man and he's up in the sky with a beard and he's mad at you, perhaps. Um, I know that this is not how everyone feels. However, this is the, the idea that I created in my own mind. Um, and I had strained relationships with my family and I was in a, a relationship that I didn't want to be in. And I started to realize that I had a problem for the first time I was terrified because I felt like I really couldn't control it. Um, I knew that if I continued, perhaps it wouldn't get worse or it would, wouldn't get better. It would probably be getting worse, but I really didn't know how to stop and nothing worked. And at this time in my life, around the age of 30, I implemented a lot of, I think it was around New Year's Eve or New Year's Day, a lot, like a lot of people, I'm like, I'm going to eat well and I'm going to exercise. And I started to do that. And I really enjoyed the, 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 the effects that it had. And I started to become less puffy <laughs> and I lost weight and I just felt better about myself. However, I still continued to drink the same way. So I felt like these two parts of myself didn't go and something had to give. You know, I couldn't continue to have such a behavior that was so, it wasn't like, it didn't really fit with the new me and the person that I was trying to create. So it was a, I felt like it was a very Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, Ms. Hyde type situation. So we're going to take another quick break. You're listening to Coming Clean Radio, The Art of Transparency. When we come back, I will continue to talk about my own story of discovery and yoga. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. How would you like increased health and vitality? How would you like to avoid the onset of disease as well as slow the aging process? This is all possible through a simple, safe, and natural process. Every day we are either moving toward wellness or away from wellness. Hi, I'm Mary Jane Mack. I'd like to be your partner in achieving optimal health. Contact me now at MaryJaneMack.com or call 425-392-0659. Visit MaryJaneMack.com. Get ready to rid yourself of all that is weighing you down and holding you back from living the life you want for yourself. Coming Clean, The Art of Transparency with Katherine Moss is a hit show for women in recovery who are ready to live life on purpose. Tune in and let Katherine help you live your truth one day at a time. Live each Tuesday, 9 a.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Tune in to Lucid Planet Radio with Dr. Kelly Neff. This hit show will illuminate your senses and empower you beyond your daily stressors and hardships. Renowned psychologist and author Dr. Kelly will captivate you with far-reaching topics and amazing guests as you wake to the greatest version of yourself. Learn to tap into your intuitions, think critically about our world, heal emotional and psychological wounds, and follow your passions to live your dreams. The Lucid Planet. Welcome home. Visit lucidplanetradio.com for more information. Are you ready to stop stress, anxiety, and low self-esteem from running your life? Join award-winning author Dr. Friedemann Schaub for Empowerment Radio and learn breakthrough solutions to switch out of survival mode and approach every day with great ease, joy, and purpose. Tune in the first and third Wednesday at 11 a.m. Pacific to Empowerment Radio with host Dr. Friedemann Schaub on Transformation Talk Radio. Visit thefearandanxietysolution.com to learn more. Almost everyone at some time in their lives ask themselves, what am I? Most of our questions are ego generated and simply don't address the problem of our false self. It's time to relax your ego and embody your soul. Dr. Dan Cohen, neurologist, inventor, and author has created tools to awaken a new way to transform from who you thought you were into what you truly are. Visit tools to awaken.com today. 
Hi, I'm Tim Darter. And I'm Steve Kramer. Join us on Spirit Fire Radio. Discover how to add the mechanics of meditation to your day. And watch yourself connect in a whole new way. Find the amazing moments in life's routines that often pass us by. Add to your awareness with Spirit Fire Radio. Tune in each Wednesday at 9 a.m. for your weekly guide to practical mindfulness. And to learn more, visit www.spiritfireradio.com. We're back on Coming Clean Radio with myself, Catherine Artimas. Today I am speaking on my own about my experience in recovery and discovery and the teachings of yoga, which I have experienced. So on October 29th, 2012, um, I had an experience or um, awakening, if you call that, um, I'm not really sure how to ex- describe it. However, up until that period, I was getting um, much more aware that perhaps there was something that I, you know, going on. I had a problem perhaps that I needed to kick. Um, so it was an experience that I guess you would call spiritual. Um, for a single moment, you know, I was offered such clarity in my mind and in my life. It was like I was given a push into higher consciousness and things made sense for a moment that, um, it seemed obvious before, you know, why hadn't I thought of that? But up until that point, um, I just didn't know how to do that. Um, I was in a yoga class of all places and I was laying in Shavasana and I, um, you know, in the night before I did, um, I go, I did go out. Um, I didn't have very much to drink, maybe just two I actually remember what I had. I had two, um, two drinks and I was laying in, um, in the yoga class and I remember the teacher said, you know, you know, what's good for you. You know, what's bad for you. Just take care of yourself. And all of a sudden I just had this message, like this clear, like every cell of my body just saying, stop, you know, and it was just so profound and me. And even maybe you hearing that you're like, okay, well, it doesn't seem underwhelming. Stop, obviously. However, this the message just had such a an impact on me, and I was just so overwhelmed at the the grandeur, like the the profoundness of of this message, and I was just floored. And I went home, and I remember my husband coming in, and I I just said like I'm I'm stopping, you know. It was just like this, you know, like a door a door closed. And I would just remember, you know, really a lot of emotion flowing out, you know, a lot of, a lot of emotion coming out that night. And, um, so I had not, I've been clean since then, since that night. And that's, you know, more than three and a half years ago, it was in 2012. So, um, when you get sober, um, things are, I would say things are seen for the very first time as they really are. And when I had the idea that if I just stop drinking, you know, everything else will just fall into place. And of course, I'll, many people know that that's just not the case. It's actually when things start getting more difficult because those feelings and emotions aren't being covered up anymore. So sometimes I even think, oh my gosh, you know, I'm, am I even crazier than I used to be? <laughs> um so just because I wasn't drinking anymore, didn't mean that my life was perfect because the reason that I drank was to cover up these other feelings that I had. Um, you know, these negative feelings about myself, the, the depression, um, the, the feeling that I had to control everything, um, the judgment that I had for myself, it was just, so this, the quitting, it just meant that now I was able to start to sort my messes out and deal with it. So these past three and a half years have been years of recovery for me. Um, when I, when I stopped, um, I couldn't fit in, in the box anymore, you know, in my job, um, who I told myself I was, um, it, it was just something I felt like I was like a a square piece and it was a triangle. Like I couldn't get it in anymore. And, um, it's something shifted and I knew I needed to 
to make changes in my life. Um, so I also at this time decided that I would like to practice and teach yoga more. And I did a, a yoga teacher training. I did it up in Northern California. And so with the recovery programs, as well as, um, in yoga, dis-ease is something that's often physical, emotional, and spiritual. And I believe that we need to care for all of these areas, you know, in just in daily life. Um, we, I mean, we throw around the word, word balance a lot, but things do need to have some type of homeostasis, some type of balance, um, and not take care of ourselves physically yet neglect our spiritual selves. And so I use the practice of yoga as a means for my recovery. I'm not saying that that's the only thing it's in addition to the other components of my recovery. It's not the main thing, but it can be used by nearly everybody, um, to reconnect themselves with their body and calm the mind and nourish their soul. They don't need to be in, um, you know, in recoveries from something, you know, hard, like, you know, drugs, alcohol, or sex, anything else like that. Um, so the more I progress in recovery, the more I realize that the teachings of yoga and what I've learned in recovery can be helpful to, to many people feeling dis-ease in their body. So you're, you're feeling uneasy, um, in their body, in their mind, and also in their life. So some people believe that, that, the, any any physical sickness or any physical disease that we have in the body starts on a um, on an energetic level, coming from the mind, and also then eventually manifesting in the physical body. So, for anyone who just feels disconnected, or stuck, unsure, depressed, anxious, or looking for something more in their lives, because I think that right now is a very um, a very important time in history. I think that a lot of people are quote unquote waking up and striving for something more and meaning in their lives. And, you know, they want to do something and have do something that's meaningful to them and be their true selves. So um, these teachings are universal and they can be customized to each individual you know, and, you know, people are different. And in yoga, there are different paths to achieve union with yourself. There's, um, Hatha yoga, which is a lot of times, um, with the physical body and become friends with the body to honor it, to learn, to relax. Um, so because when we have tension in our bodies, you know, restricts the energy flow. I had Nikki Myers from, um, yoga for 12 step recovery on, and she talked about, um, you know, the issues being in the tissues. And when we have that tension and we have those stored negative emotions, they're still living there and it restricts our energy flows to flow, um, in the body. And so it becomes aware, it helps you become aware of your body. Um, a lot of times well, I, neg I re neglected myself physically, um, during all those years and to kind of befriend befriend ourselves once again. We also can practice bhakti yoga, which is um, the yoga of devotion and direction of our feeling. So we can cultivate love in our hearts and, you know, feel our feelings, which can be kind of scary to delve into. So you start to feel compassion for yourself and for other people and maybe practice some devotion, whatever that means for you, whatever you feel strongly devoted to. Karma yoga, which means the, the yoga of action, helping others, um, service, acting. Um, so there was a lot of thinking and, you know, maybe I do this and that, but there was like a lot of, in myself, I was very stagnant. And now with the karma yoga, we can be active in the recovery. And jnana yoga, the yoga of discrimination, finding out what's good for us, you know, comparing, um, the good and the bad in life or not the bad, but you know, the, what's good for you at the moment, what's not so good for you at the moment and Raja yoga of meditation, which can be very, very helpful. Meditation has really, really helped me in, um, in my recovery in 
in October of last year, I went to the Himalayas in India. Um, this wasn't my first trip to India, but it was a bit different in a way um, because it was a pilgrimage to, to different areas of the Himalayas that are very spiritually charged. And it was an amazing trip. I was so grateful that I could go on this trip. We So we visited um, Buddhist temples and Hindu, Hindu temples, Jain um, temples. Uh, we also participated in ceremonies and meditated in caves. <laughs> um, I also, one of the highlights for the, of that trip for me was ba- bathing in the Ganges River. So before we went to um, one of the great pilgrimage areas, we stopped in the Ganges and for purification. And this allowed me, I just felt that seeing this great, big, strong river, um, also um, referred to as Mother Ganga, it really inspired me that just this flow through life, allowing my life to flow instead of controlling it the way that I want it to be. So when I was sitting next to this great big river, you know, I, I tried to feel those characteristics of this, of this great fast moving river inside of me and living my life in that way. Um, yeah, I mean, I love the spirituality in the everyday and especially in India. So it's not separated from the daily life. It's, it's incorporated together and as one of them, the same it's being spiritual and living life. So, I mean, after all, um, I, like many other people, believe that we are spiritual beings having a a human experience. So, you're listening to Coming Clean Radio, The Art of Transparency. We're going to take another break. And when we come back, I am going to continue my story of recovery and discovery and my path on path to yoga, union. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. Awaken to your radiant, authentic self. For over 15 years, Soul Purpose Advocate Nancy Monson has been focused on leading change in the lives of those looking to live their true purpose. She is devoted to supporting people and living a soul-directed life every day. Let Nancy help you overcome fear, worry, and doubt. Visit EverydaySpirituality.com to learn how Nancy can be your Soul Purpose Advocate. Tune in to The Jen Royster Show, intuitive guidance to inspire your life, each Thursday at 8 a.m. Pacific and 11 a.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. This amazing show is an inspirational hour that will take you on an epic metaphysical journey to discover the spiritual approach to life's greatest challenges. Dr. Jen is an internationally known intuitive counselor, spiritual teacher, and energy healer. Call in for intuitive readings and visit JenRoyster.com for more information. Get ready to experience Truth Talk Radio with host Deb Acker. Tune in to Truth Talk Radio each Wednesday at 3 p.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com to illuminate the truth in your daily life as you experience life, love, and abundance from a whole new perspective. This hit show will leave you feeling lighter and bring you into a place of infinite possibilities every day in every way. Visit TruthTalkRadioShow.com for upcoming transformative topics and guests. Get ready to rid yourself of all that is weighing you down and holding you back from living the life you want for yourself. Coming Clean, The Art of Transparency with Katherine Moss is a hit show for women in recovery who are ready to live life on purpose. Tune in and let Katherine help you live your truth one day at a time. Live each Tuesday, 9 a.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Hi, this is Leslie Fontaine, and my show is Sheer Alchemy on TransformationTalkRadio.com. When we're bogged down with our emotions, the hardships that plague us in our relationships, at work, our finances, we literally can't see the higher plane where we could be operating from. Tune in to Leslie Fontaine, Sheer Alchemy, 
on TransformationTalkRadio.com. There are so many resources out there for meditation. But did you know that Atana's Heart Earth Healing Meditation is available for you for free? Yes, that's right. You can receive this free healing meditation today from Atana Vadili. All you need to do is visit his website, atanamethod.com. That's A-T-A-A-N-A method.com and sign up. You will receive your free meditation instantly. That's atanamethod.com. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Coming Clean Radio with myself, Catherine R.T. Moss. I am talking with you today about my experiences with recovery and discovery of myself and the path of yoga. So before I mentioned that meditation had become a very important part of my recovery and my life. So um, I originally got into meditation. I started to get the um, SRF, which is Self-Realization Fellowship Lessons at Home in the Mail. And these lessons, which I um, sent away for, came every two weeks, and I learned about yoga. Um, I learned yogic meditation techniques. I learned about the science and the art of yoga. And I started to practice and build my own personal meditation practice from what I was learning. So I didn't take a class or anything. I just, I learned these techniques at home and on my own. Um, So this practice really has been life-changing. And I feel at this point, um, without the inner practice of hatha yoga and meditation in the morning, um, sometimes... Sometimes I even just practice for 10 minutes. Sometimes it's five minutes or whatever I can do, because in my opinion, it's always the intention that we set and not, you know, if we're meditating, you know, for an hour, it doesn't matter. It's the intention that we set in the beginning of, of giving ourselves five minutes or 10 minutes or whatever you can. So if I didn't have that, I would really would feel off. And it's just a really wonderful way to ground yourself and to feel centered in your life. Um, whatever, you know, technique that works for you, you can, you can do, um, you can even start with just sitting and being mindful, watching the breath. Um, so I'm not saying that meditation or following the teachings of yoga will fix your life. I don't think that anything is that easy. There's no magic pill, but I believe that these practices give you the tools to come at life's challenges in a proactive way. So I'm not, getting the, the fix, but I can, I, I, through meditation practice, maybe, you know, it's often that the solutions will come to me when I give myself the chance, because a lot of times you can't hear that inner voice. It's a really wonderful way to develop intuition as well, because the voice of the ego is very loud and the voice of the soul, you have to turn that down to hear the soft whisper of the soul. And of course, meditation has been, like I said, a wonderful tool in my recovery to help manage the the out of control emotions. Um, you know, I used to be somebody who was very up and down, up and down, um, also anxiety, depression, and anger. And I feel like I'm able to be a little bit more even minded. So, um, I've also, I've let go of being, feeling I was so in control, you know, like releasing the death grip, you know, and letting, letting go of, of the feeling that I can control everything that I know that a lot of people can probably relate to that. And I feel happier these days. I experience states of joy and contentment in myself. And it's not based on something that I'm consuming or eating or doing. It's just an inner calmness. And I don't feel like this all the time, but there are flashes of, of just, you know, being more, being more happy in general. And I'm also compassionate with myself. I'm easier on myself. Um, I'm not as judgmental with myself and other people. And I've learned to accept things the way things really are. 
and not wishing they were different. You know, not wishing someone else would just do what I want them to do. They're just to accept them for who they are and and what is. So if you're if you've enjoyed what you've heard and are interested in bringing the teachings of yoga into your life, um I would recommend by starting your own little daily ritual. It can be very small at first. It can be anything that you want. It could be waking up early and just sitting and breathing for a few minutes before you start your day. Or perhaps practicing one or two hatha yoga postures, taking a few conscious breaths, and then sitting for just a few minutes practicing being completely present in that very moment. You know, we can sit and sit and, and inhale and say to ourselves, I am inhaling and then exhale, mentally affirming, I am exhaling. So really being present, connecting your mind with the breath. I find it really also helpful to find my own area where I can practice this every day. Again, it's not what we do in the beginning that's the most important, but the intention that we're setting. You know, you might be waking up that five minutes earlier to do those practices, and that's where the power is in that intention. You're like, I'm waking up to do this. Doing anything with clear and conscious intention Will bring, will bring more awareness and presence into your experience in this life. So I, ha- I hope that you've enjoyed my story of and perhaps expand your understanding of what yoga or self-realization is and you know how it can benefit us in our own day-to-day lives. And just to close, I wanted to read this quote by Paramahansa Yogananda. Self-realization is, in fact, the only religion, for it is the true basis of religion, no matter how people define their beliefs. So, I want to thank you all for tuning in today. If you've enjoyed what you've heard, please send me an email at, um, my website is katherinemoss.com. Um, you can also contact me if you've really, if you're interested in learning more about yogic philosophy, I will, I would really, um, enjoy connecting with you and and offering you some recommendations of reading, uh, videos, that type of thing, or to learn more about the meditation lessons that you can, that you can order. Um, You can also, yeah, so you can visit my website and I have a few videos. Um, I have a meditation series, a four week series on the website that you can just watch uh, from your computer. Um, So that's it for today. I hope that you've enjoyed my story um, of transparency and I hope that you've learned a little bit more about yoga So thanks a lot for tuning in. Please join me every Tuesday at 12 o'clock Eastern, 11 Central and 9 Pacific time. Have a great week and I'll see you next time. Namaste. You've been listening to Coming Clean, the art of transparency with Catherine Moss. Join Catherine and countless other women in recovery stepping into their truth and supporting one another living life on purpose. Tune in each Tuesday, 9 a.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com or visit the archives at WithinTheFlow.com.